So Hare Krishna, everybody. Welcome to today's session. So we'll start our session by paying our obeisance to His Divine Grace, Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada, the founder Acharya for school. And we are in our journey for chapter 11. We have come pretty far. Okay, so now chapter 11, um, it has 55 verses. And the title of the chapter is the universal form. So last week, um, we covered the first two sections here, right? From shloka number one to eight. And today we'll be covering from, you know, the following three sections, shloka number nine to 34, okay? So last week, um, so let's go with the flow of the chapter 11. So the flow of chapter 11 is that it starts with, so 10th chapter uh, ends with Krishna saying, you know, everything is nothing but, you know, all the opulences he said. It's nothing but a spark from one of his spark, you know. So when Arjuna hears that, you know, then what comes in Arjuna's mind? He requests Krishna, you know, to show that form, you know, where if the spark of Krishna, right, it, it, it comes up into all these whole opulences. Then Arjuna asks, requests question uh, to show that universal form, how he is everywhere. Yeah. So, and then um, from Shloka fifth to eighth, um, we saw how Krishna, like um, you know, uh, you are excited to watch a movie based on the trailer, right? So Krishna gives a trailer. From Shoka 5 to 8, as what can Arjuna expect to see? Yeah, he says that you will find hundreds and millions of you know heads and you know Adityas, Vastus, name it anybody, you will see, you know, in me. And how Krishna nicely, you know, um, um, for us when we go to watch a movie, it's like, like I said, you know, it's it's a limited screen, right? We have I don't really remember, but something like 70 mm, 90 mm, right? Uh, the screen size. And just imagine for Arjuna, you know, Krishna gave him the screen unlimited, the whole sky, you know. Krishna, when he showed his universal form, Arjuna was looking everywhere, you know, everywhere he could see the universe, you know, parts of that. So it was the, the whole sky, you know, unlimited sky was the screen for Arjuna. And when we just think about it, you know, there are verses where we go today that, uh, you know, we, we feel awe. You know, that awe oh, thing well, which comes to our mind, wow, you know, that, that kind of feeling. So that's what Krishna, so Krishna gave a glimpse, you know, like, um, you know, that when we join a company or something, uh, they give us an orientation session, right? So um, to get, you know, us um, un, uh, get a glimpse of what is expected out of the role. And that's what Krishna does, you know, he gives an orientation. So look at Krishna, how great management he has, right? So um, it all comes, you know, we, uh, many times when we see parts of Bhagavad Gita, we feel, wow, this comes from into us, you know, no wonder we are part and parcel because every quality, you know, um, we get it, you know, from Krishna. And we learned that in 10th chapter as well. So he's the origin of all the qualities, right? And then today, um, we'll see how um, Sanjaya describes you know what Arjuna saw in the universe. Yeah. So he, we, we know, right? There is a dialogue happening, um, you know, between Arjuna and Krishna. And when we started Bhagavad Gita, so Sanjay was, you know, also on the other side, you know, um, describing the same to Dhritarashtra, right? Now Sanjay had um, the vision, you know. We were, we'll see like um, that. Um, Arjuna couldn't see that form unless Krishna gave him that Divya Chakshu, right? That divine vision. And similarly, Sanjay had also got that divine vision. You know, only when there are several questions which happen that, you know, on the battlefield of uh, Purukshetra, did everybody see another universal form? You know, no, it wasn't, you know. Only people, because from our material eyes, like we discussed last time, we cannot see you know, even a microbe, right? So how can we see you know, something so transcendental? Um, something, you know, so um, so for, for, for Arjuna to see, Krishna gave that Divya Chakshu, yeah? And similarly, 
Sanjay, does anybody know how, uh, how did Sanjay get that? Krishna in one of his, you know, in Shakta Vesh Avatar, you know, uh, Krishna's one of the Shakta Vesh Avatar is who compiled Bhagavatam. Ramaprabhu Mataji, you are saying something. Veda Vyas. Yes, so Vyas Dev, right? Mm -hmm. So Vyas Dev is the person, you know, he is a Shakta Vesh, he is an avatar of Krishna. Okay, so uh, and Shakta Vesh avatar means they are like, uh, there are different kind of avatars. I think we covered this um, somewhere in the initial chapters, you know? maybe it is. So there are different kind of, uh, six kind of avatars and um, uh, you can categorize, broad categories, you can say, you know, like Leela avatar. You know, uh, like all the Leelas of Krishna, right? For her and all. Then we have Purusha Uthara similarly, which is like Garbha Daksha Vishnu, Kshiro Daksha Vishnu, and Maha Vishnu. These are the Purusha. Then we have Guna Uthara's. Guna Uthara's is the three Gunas, right? So Brahma, Vishnu, and Mahesh. Those are the Guna Uthara's. Similarly, there is a category which is Shakta Vishnu. You know, then as the name says, you know, these are empowered beings. You know, they are giving that shakti, shakti, you know. So these are empowered beings by Krishna. They are empowered to do certain things. Yeah. And Narad Muni is also a shakta vishavasa. So Veda Vyas is a shakta vishavasa, yeah, Vyas Dev. And Vyas Dev bestowed that to Sanjaya. Okay. So, so uh, <clears throat> and that's why Sanjaya could see. He had the vision to see what is happening in the battlefield because he was bestowed that mercy from Vyas Dev, that moon. Okay. Similarly, he could also see the universal form of Krishna. Okay. So, Sanjaya describes, you know, that's the next section of Arjuna's vision as what exactly Arjuna saw, you know, in universal form. And then Arjuna shares his own experience of seeing that universal form. We see slowly uh, in these sections that how Arjuna initially, he would be describing the form. But slowly he moves his gears from describing to glorifying the form. You know, he starts glorifying Krishna's form. You know? So that's like, we will share how Arjuna's not only mental but also physical changes, physical experiences. Like we'll see, he'll get uh, start getting uh, his hair stand on his skin, like we say goosebumps and all. You know, we'll see the physical also how Arjuna undergoes. Okay, and then we see um, and yeah, in the end. Of that section, uh, Arjuna, after seeing the vast form, he asks Krishna, you know, who are you? You know, two questions. Who are you and what is your mission? Yeah. And then Krishna replies, you know, I am time, you know, and just become my instrument, he tells Arjuna. Yeah. So, uh, and then Arjuna performs prayers. This is the section we'll cover next time. We'll wrap up chapter 11, Krishna willing. If that happens, then 35th shloka, to 46 is Arjuna's prayers. Uh, how Arjuna pays obeisances, you know, he does beautiful prayers, you know, and also he apologizes to Krishna that, um, you know, I always thought you, you know, how I, I thought you as a friend and, you know, I used to tease you, I used to do all these actions, you know, and oh my goodness, you are, you know, you are the supreme, you know, and, and that kind of a thing. And, uh, he shares that uh, he prays to Krishna and apologizes as well. Along, so then in the last section we see how to see any form of Krishna. So in the end of eleventh chapter, towards the end, we see that Arjuna initially he requested to see the universal form, right? And then later part of the chapter we see how after seeing the universal form he feels you know overwhelmed, yeah. And then he requests Krishna that please show me your forehand form. You know, because this was not something what he could digest more. And then Krishna shows his forehand. And in the end, Arjuna says, you know, you're the best with, you know, what with the two handed form. So Krishna then shows him the two handed form. Yeah. And so be it any form, you know, in the end of this chapter, we'll learn to see any form of Krishna, you know, universal, two handed, four and any form of Krishna. The prerequisite, the main component we need is bhakti, pure bhakti. Okay, pure bhakti is the prerequisite to see any form of Krishna. That is the last section. Okay, so we'll start today with our verse 9 to 14, where Sanjaya describes Arjuna vision. You know, um, so what Arjuna actually saw was indescribable. Okay, um, and Sanjaya could also see that. 
you know and it is like um, there are sometimes when we experience something and it's so beautiful that when you try to put it in words you run short of words right and just imagine the material nature uh, you know we come across some certain things be it any innovation be it any anything you know um, wow you know you get that feeling and you don't know how to describe it to others so just imagine for sanjay and arjuna you know they are seeing this vast form you know the universal form and krishna mentioned you know in the, in the last section so that this is the form nobody has seen it before this it's the first time krishna is showing this to somebody so it's like it they sanjay and arjuna you know we we have to understand that these are the kind of experiences something which we see you cannot describe fully in the words yeah and same thing sanjay is trying his best to reveal what he saw to dhritarashtra you know because he is also feeling that kind of ecstasy when he is seeing that form you know at the same time you have to make sure you describe somebody you know and that you have to get the right words so all these combinations have to you know it's difficult to find the uh, put them in line right so we have to understand you know whatever we are seeing here of course it, it's it's like um it's something which is beyond experience it's uh, i mean beyond expression for example yeah so uh with that we start so um this section we it's just you know for our understanding from verse 9 to 12 arjuna saw unlimited mouths eyes you know um faces weapons and you know the whole form was wonderfully effulgent you know and then 13 to 14 verse we see seeing everything in the universe at one place arjuna bows down yeah so the first verse for today sanjay uvacha evam uppa tato rajan mahayogeshwaro hari darshayam asa parthay paramam rupam aishwaram yeah sanjay said o king having spoken thus the supreme lord of all mystic power the personality of god had displayed his universal form to arjuna so sanjay is saying this to dhritarashtra okay so see he calls him mahayogeshwaro see yogi is someone who you know through their austerity and penance they uh, they have they develop a they you know they get a mystic power like there are a different kind of mystic power you know in yogis like for example uh, a person can become lighter than the lightest you know heavier than the heaviest you know so there are different siddhis right different mystic powers yogis have now arjuna is calling krishna mahayogeshwar again so different names they are calling each other right we have been consistently seeing and each verse when they call there is a reason behind it it's just not abrupt yeah so arjuna is calling krishna mahayogesh yogeshwar yeah so yogi is ishwar right that right he is the lord of all mystic power all yogas yeah so sanjay tries to describe but as usual you know words are always not enough to describe these experiences yeah so uh, sanjay helps us to give us an universal form yeah um just give me one second all right so so yeah so he is now telling dhritarashtra so uh, to um, that krishna displayed the universal form yeah and further in the verse we'll see 10th and 11th verse yeah um so hari krishna prabhu ji can you read it no yes ma'am sir arjuna saw in that universal form unlimited mouths unlimited eyes unlimited wonderful wonderful visions the form was decorated with many celestial ornaments and bore many divine unpraised weapons he wore celestial garlands and 
garments and many divine scents were smeared over his body all was wondrous brilliant unlimited all expanding vishvato mukam thank you see you be learnt in ninth chapter right that ekatvena pratakvena and vishvato mukam right there are three kinds of you know gyanis we learnt right so here is the vishvato mukam you know so what it is in in these two verses you will see the word there is a repeated repeated use of the word many right many indicates you know here again they are trying to describe there are many but what they are trying to say is they, it's limitless you know there was no limit of seeing the number of hands mouths legs you know faces helmets it's unlimited right so they, that's why they are repeating again and again there are many this many this many this you know so so these manifestations you know were distributed throughout the sky throughout the universe you know by the grace of krishna yeah arjun could imagine arjuna's position that he could sit in one place and he could see the whole universe in one place you know not universes right yeah so that was due to the potence inconceivable potency of krishna you know it's inconceivable for our brain you know? and sanjay that's why he is using so many adjectives to describe the forms he is using wondrous brilliant unlimited expanding he's trying his best to use several adjectives you know how much ever he can to describe that it's like um, you know it's undescribable you know so so they saw unlimited thousands and millions of all these you know how, mouths eyes everywhere you know throughout these okay so with that uh, the 12th verse um maybe i will jyoti mata ji will you be able to read yes mata ji hare krishna if hundreds of thousands of suns were to rise at once into the sky their radiance might resemble the effulgence of the supreme person in that universal form bhagavad gita 11.12 at that time arjuna could see in the universal form of the lord the unlimited expansions of the universe situated in one place although divided into many many thousands bhagavad gita 11.13 then bewildered and astonished his hair standing on and arjuna bowed his head to offer obeisances and with folded hands began to pray to the supreme lord bhagavad gita 11.14 hari krishna thank Mata. you thank you so see here um, what is sanjaya saying if hundreds of thousands of suns were to rise at once in the sky that's the description is giving for the effulgence of krishna you know in that universal form now tell me has um, sanjaya ever seen so many you know more than one sun for example no right so just one sun we can imagine when we we can't withstand to see from our direct eyes right it's so much it produces so much heat as we are going closer you know uh, we we complain it's, it's too hot it's too cold look at our complaints right and there you go that you know we can imagine we can just try to imagine we cannot even imagine for you what sanjay is trying to say when he is saying you know thousands of suns hundreds and thousands of suns right so sanjay is astonished when he is describing that it is like so many hundreds and thousands of suns yeah now arjuna saw the universal form you know um but others could not see that form right because krishna like i said he gave him that vision right uh, and arjuna because of that vision he could see in the body of krishna in that universal form you know not not only you know uh, i mean it's like thousands of planets hundreds and thousands of planets it is okay? as we learn from our vedic uh, scriptures actually that there are many universes there are many planets you know um, some of them are you know uh, we learn that some of them are made by earth some of them are made by gold some of them are made by jewels you know um, and just imagine uh arjuna sitting on that chariot he could see all these universes right so it was um it was to that level of ecstasy right 
So, uh, and that's where the second shloka, the 13th shloka says that Arjuna could see in universal form unlimited expansions of the universe, you know, situated in one place. Yeah. And then what happened to Arjuna? So he got, he, then it says bewildered and astonished. And then the physical, you know, the hair standing on his end and Arjuna thus bowed down and paid all obeisances with folded hands and prayed to Krishna. Okay. So see, many a times um, we have to understand when we say bewildered, it's more from the level of, you know, like astonishment because we should not forget that it's the first time Krishna is showing this form. You know, um, we had the uh, Virat Rupa. Uh, Krishna showed his Virat Rupa um, in, uh, say, he showed his universal form in, when he visited Hastinapur also, you know, where Bhishma, Dhruna, everybody could do that darshan. Okay. Um, and um, even Duryodhana. But he thought he's a mystic person. You know, it's not a big deal. You know, so Krishna did give him alert then. We also heard the story where Yashoda uh, Mata can see the, uh, you know, universe within Krishna's mouth, right? But this form we have to understand later. We will also in further shlokas, we'll see that, um, you know, Krishna also shows his Kala Rupa as part of his Virat Rupa. And it's the first time Krishna is showing Kala Rupa. And this is something like, you know, a, a bit scary, fearful. And that's what we'll see later on today, how Arjuna's, you know, is fearful at the same time, you know. Um, so here, see, Arjuna is inspired. Uh, he's, he's, he's wondered, yeah. And in that wonder, although he's such a sober person, calm person, you know, uh, he still, he felt that ecstasy. His hair stood up on his hand, you know. Um, and suddenly, from a, a relationship of a friend with Krishna, he started offering obeisances to him, right? As a Supreme Lord with folding his hands because he saw the Supreme, right? Okay. So uh, now, see, like Arjuna, we learned, right, that uh, in fourth chapter, uh, Bhakto Sime Sakha Cheti, that's what uh, Krishna says to Arjuna, you know, that um, you are my friend and a devotee, right? Uh, so I am giving you this knowledge. So we learned that uh, there has to be a relationship with Krishna, right? Now, yeah, they, they can be categorized into primary relationship and secondary relationship. Okay. Now, primary relationship, I think we, we should know this. There are five primary relationships, you know, uh, or rasas, he say, with which, you know, uh, with Krishna. One is Shantarash, 